Massive silkworm production transforms larvae fed on mulberry leaves into luxurious silk threads through a meticulous process by blending tradition with cutting-edge innovations. Mulberry trees are cultivated for their nutrient-packed leaves, which are essential for feeding silkworms. These plants are grown in warm climates with sufficient rainfall. They are harvested throughout the growing season, from spring to early autumn, aligning with the developmental stages of the silkworms. They can be harvested in two ways. The first method is leaf picking, where individual mulberry leaves are carefully snipped off with scissors. The second method involves cutting and removing entire branches. Once harvested, these leaves are transported to a specific area where they serve as the primary diet in the life cycle of mulberry silkworms. Once the mulberry leaves reach their destination, they are prepped for the next phase of sericulture, rearing the silkworms. The process begins right after the silkworm eggs hatch and the young larvae are fed finely chopped, tender mulberry leaves multiple times a day. As these silkworms grow, both the leaf size and feeding intervals expand. During the intermediate stages, larger pieces of leaf are provided and the silkworms are monitored closely to ensure they receive adequate nutrition. In the final phases of their life cycle, the silkworms are provided with whole leaves several times a day to satisfy their insatiable hunger, ensuring they gather enough energy for cocoon spinning. When ready to spin, silkworms show several clear signs of maturity. Mature silkworms grow to about three to four inches in length and become noticeably plumper. Their bodies look fuller, indicating they have stored up vital nutrients, and they appear more opaque due to the production of silk proteins in anticipation of cocoon formation. Additionally, mature silkworms exhibit restlessness and wandering behavior, moving actively around their rearing trays in search of a suitable place to spin their cocoons. This increased activity signals their instinctual drive to find an optimal location for cocooning. Once the silkworms reach maturity, they are placed into frames that are systematically arranged in rearing trays. Each tray filled with mature larvae is then suspended parallel to wooden structures to ensure adequate air circulation. Maintaining a stable temperature and humidity level for the production of strong, continuous silk threads. The optimal temperature range is between 23 to 28 degrees Celsius and the ideal humidity level is around 60 to 70 percent. These conditions are essential to prevent the silk from drying out and breaking during the spinning process. The larvae begin to encase themselves in cocoons by secreting saliva 
from their two salivary glands located on their heads. This saliva solidifies upon contact with air, transforming into silk. Typically, the cocoon spinning process takes two to three days, though certain silkworm varieties may take up to four days to complete their cocoons. The cocoons are collected and manually sorted by skilled workers who visually inspect each cocoon. They evaluate several key factors including size, shape, color and surface texture. High quality cocoons are typically smooth, uniformly shaped and free from irregularities. Based on their quality, the cocoons are classified and placed in different baskets. There are different ways of reeling the cocoons. It can be operated manually enabling the reeler to extract silk threads from cocoons in a controlled and precise manner. The cocoons are boiled in hot water to soften the sericin that binds the silk fibers. The reeler then meticulously extracts multiple silk filaments. Another method involves the use of an automatic reeling machine. Initially, the cocoons are boiled to soften the sericin, facilitating the unwinding of the silk thread without causing it to break. After boiling, the cocoons are fed into the automatic reeling machine, which is equipped with a reeling basin filled with hot water to maintain the softened state of the cocoons throughout the process. The machine then locates the ends of the silk filaments and begins the reeling process. Once the reels are full, the threads are soaked in hot water mixed with mild detergents to remove the sericin. This process makes the silk more absorbent and ready for dyeing. The silk is thoroughly rinsed to eliminate any remaining soap or chemicals. Then the silk is immersed in dye baths containing specific dyes and mordants, which help fix the dye to the fibers. The dyeing conditions, such as temperature and duration, are carefully controlled to achieve a uniform color and intensity. Once dyed, the silk is rinsed again to remove any excess dye. The silk filaments are then turned into substantial yarn using a loom through a process called throwing. The silk is twisted and reeled into skeins, then wound onto bobbins. These collections of filaments are subsequently processed through twisters to convert a single thread into an organized warp. This process can also be done using a re-reeling machine. It employs a series of guides and rollers to smoothly direct the silk from the source reel. These guides are strategically positioned to ensure the filaments are properly aligned during unwinding, maintaining consistent tension, and preventing any snags. Throughout the process, the machine continuously moisturizes the silk with water to keep it soft. As the silk filaments are guided through the machine, they are rewound onto a new reel or bobbin. The precision winding mechanism ensures an even distribution of silk across the reel, resulting in a uniform, and smooth layer. This mechanism comprises a series of calibrated rollers and winding arms that move in a coordinated manner to lay the filaments neatly onto the new reel. The silks are then organized and soaked in a mixture of warm water and soap. The temperature of the water is carefully regulated, usually kept warm but not boiling, to prevent damage to the delicate silk fibers. The silk remains in this bath for several hours, allowing the soap to penetrate and loosen the sericin layer from the silk fibers. After soaking, the silk is rinsed in clean water to remove any remaining soap and dissolved sericin. Each silk filament is then fed into a twisting machine where it is precisely aligned and tensioned to prevent weak spots and ensure uniform twisting. The machine provides exact control over the twist count effectively twisting multiple silk strands together to enhance their strength, durability, and texture. After the twisting process, the threads are wound onto spools for further processing.
The spools holding the threads are placed on a creel, allowing the weaving machine to draw the silk threads. The threads are manually aligned and tensioned to ensure they are properly prepared for weaving. Crosswise, the threads are wound onto a shuttle, which carries the weft thread back and forth across the warp. The harnesses are raised and lowered to create an opening, or shed, between the warp threads, enabling the shuttle to pass through. Lengthwise, the threads pass through heddles, which are small eyelets on vertical frames known as harnesses. Each heddle guides a warp thread, and the harnesses control the movement of these heddles. The automatic weaving machine precisely manages the harnesses' movements to produce the desired weave pattern. In the picking process, the shuttle is propelled across the loom, passing the weft thread through the shed. Once the weft thread is inserted through the shed, the reed, which functions as a comb-like frame, moves forward to press the weft thread into place, creating a tight and even fabric. The reed ensures that each weft thread is packed tightly against the previous one, maintaining the fabric's uniformity which make the final product ready for the market in different forms.